Hello everyone, Rurikan here coming at you with another Firefall video and today I'm going to try and do a basic guide for you guys that are thinking about should you guys start on uh, Firefall or not. Now currently I am in Thump Thump. The reason why I came to Thump Thump is because Copacabana was just so chock full of people that it was being a pain to record in. Hopefully Thump Thump will be slightly more quiet. Anyways, the very first thing I want to talk about in this video is going to be the cash shop because I know what a lot of people are thinking you know free to play MMO what exactly can you get at the cash shop is it fair is it not fair so let's have a quick look at the cash shop here and here we go so we got some XP boosts for one day three days and seven days so this is this is pretty standard just a convenience item trust me in my opinion you do not need an experience boost and this is said by someone who doesn't have a lot of time to play. So the more time you have to play, the less I feel that you're going to need XP boosts. Then there's the Copacabana Personal Arc Porter. This is pretty much an item that will teleport you to Copacabana. So it kind of functions like the World of Warcraft Earthstone. So in a way, I would consider this to be a very important item, even though it's convenience. It is also very important because it will allow you to travel faster back to the capital city, which also happens to be right smack dab in the middle of the map. So it is pretty darn useful, if I can say so myself, especially once the map actually becomes uh, bigger and we start actually doing incursions into the melding, the melding actually starts getting pushed back. I feel that it's going to become an even more important item then. I'm not exactly sure what is the cooldown on the item right now, but uh, yeah. Obrigado fireworks. Obrigado is basically thank you in Portuguese. Uh, so I would assume that these are just simple fireworks. The obrigado being from uh, the developers of the game where they are thanking you for buying such a stupid item, I guess. I mean, it's not really stupid. Sure, it's fireworks, it's vanity, whatever you want to call it. To me, I'm a very much, I, I look at things from a meta standpoint. Like, where does it all stack in giving me power? It gives me nothing? Okay, it's not that important then. Uh, Wiki Whacker doesn't seem like it's that important either. Boon Boon Tiki Pet, it's obviously a pet, and there's three of more of those. The Nanu Tiki Pet, as well as the Oi Tiki Pet. Oi basically means hello in Brazilian. Actually, not hello, it's hi. It is the shortened version of hello, Brazilian, in Portuguese, whatever. Although, the thing is, the, the reason I say Brazilian is because Portuguese people don't usually say, you know, Portuguese from Portugal, I mean, don't usually say, oi, not, not, not that much anyways. Uh, but the other item that we've almost skipped through here was the Cobra R54 LGV. This is a vehicle. So this is actually a pretty important item, so two important items so far. The Copacabana, pers the Copacabana Personal Arc Porter, as well as the Cobra R54 LGV. Uh, it is the only type of vehicle in the game, I mean, not this specific vehicle, but LGVs are the only type of vehicle in the game at this moment. I'm not sure if they plan on adding more or not, even though I would very much like to see, you know, like buggies, Halo style, what's it called, uh, the Warthog? Something like a Warthog, that'd be pretty cool. But I'm not sure if that is something that is in the plans or not. But it would definitely be cool, like a two-player vehicle with someone on a turret in the back. Insane! But yeah, right now only LGVs are in a vehicle. Uh, they're pretty good to cover uh, long distances, obviously. They work pretty much like a mount, except there's actual vehicle mechanics behind it, so it's actually like piloting a vehicle. It's uh, pretty cool. I've ridden on one. I might show you guys one before the game is over, even though I don't actually own one of the LGVs, the only one I have is the race one, which you can pretty much get anywhere. Not anywhere, you have to go to Sunken Harbor and talk to a guy. He gives you a race motorcycle, but you can only use it on race events. You cannot summon it at will, you need to be close to a race terminal. Anyways, if we keep going down uh, the list here, there is a rechargeable glider pad. So this is pretty much a portable glider pad, which is something that you can put down. It is something very much in the veins of... Let me see if mine is available. I think mine has a cooldown. Yeah, it's still under cooldown. But anyways, it's basically a glider pad that you put wherever you want and then you glide on it. You guys have seen me use a glider pad, so that shouldn't be too much news. I will use a glider pad later on. I believe the, um, the cooldown on placing this bad boy is like two minutes, maybe three minutes. Not 100% sure, but it is a pretty short cooldown, so it is definitely a very good item to have. Uh, so those would be the three main important items. The Tiki Torch is basically something that you drop on the floor and everybody starts dancing. Not something that I really care that much about. So if you're planning on buying anything from the cash store, I would say 
Your first priority should definitely be the Cobra R54 RLGV. Your second priority, the rechargeable glider pad. And your third priority, the Copacabana personal arc porter. That is my personal opinion. I could be wrong. I could be right. Whatever. Um, and if you can only afford one of them, like if you don't want to buy one of the big ones, the rechargeable glider pad is definitely a very good item to have. As a matter of fact, I am probably going to get some of the game's currency, if nothing else, just to get the glider pad. It is that good. Because, I mean, let's face it, I can just go wherever I want. Like, let's say I want to move forward really fast. I want to cross this whole chasm super fast. I just pop the goddamn thing, the glider pad, put it here, pop a glide, and slide down here all the way to wherever the hell I want to go. By the time I get there, the recharge timer is probably over. I can just put another one down and go wherever I want to go to next. So, yes, it is definitely a very useful item. That is what you can get in the cash shop. There are also some starter packs that you can get. If you get the $100 starter pack, you're going to get the bike that's here in the shop, as well as the Copacabana Arc Porter. And you'll also get a couple of beans for use, as well as a bunch of pilot tokens. And you guys are wondering, what the hell are pilot tokens? I'll show you guys in a second. The other item that you will also get is a random cosmetic item that you can only get through the starter packs, be it the $20 one or the $100 one. So like I said, the other thing that you get in the starter packs is also pilot tokens. What do you need pilot tokens for to unlock these bad boys? However, pilot tokens are unlockable just by playing the game. As you can see here, I have multiple um, unlocks in my battle frame. And once I reach a battle frame unlock that has this uh, little symbol here, it's going to give me another pilot token. So I already acquired um, enough pilot tokens to buy myself a battle frame, and I already have four more uh, pilot tokens towards my next battle frame. So it it's not really a problem. Just by playing the game, you'll be able to unlock the battle frame. So pilot tokens is not something I would consider essential. As a matter of fact, something that I think definitely should be changed in the starter packs is get rid of the pilot tokens, replace them for the equivalent in red bean coins. That is my opinion, however. Uh, okay. Because also, I mean, if you're buying something for real money, let's stick the currencies. Let's separate the currencies. There's stuff that you can win in-game and stuff that you can win outside of the game. So, with real money. That being red beans. I don't think you should really be buying pilot tokens with real money. It doesn't make a lot of sense for me. Um, anyways, the other thing is... Uh, the things that you can buy with real money, you can also unlock battle frames by the usage of the red beans. Uh, you can unlock any battle frame you want, as you can see here. But being completely honest, I would not advise you to do so because, like I said, it is fairly easy to unlock these battle frames by just playing the game. Unless you're someone that's like, no, I need to unlock all the battle frames. And sure, go ahead, do whatever the hell you want. Now, on the topic of battle frames, I also wanted to address that. And... I realize that this video I'm not giving you guys a lot of action, kicking ass and all that stuff because the point of this video is to be a guide for starting players or players that are considering playing Firefall. So anyways, let's keep on um, on topic here and what I wanted to say next is in regards to battle frames, in my opinion, and bear in mind like I said, this is in my opinion, there is no reason whatsoever to max out any of the Accord battle frames. You guys might be wondering, what do you mean? Well, the thing is, the Accord Battle Frames is what you would call a basic battle frame. And why is it a basic battle frame? It can do... It, it can, like, it can do really well, don't get me wrong. Like, it can be a really powerful battle frame. The reason I don't like them is because if you take any of the premium battle frames, it's going to be able to do more. And by more, I don't mean more efficiency. I mean it's going to be able to do more things. Like, for instance, take the Accord Dreadnought here. Well, actually, not the Accord Dreadnought, because I don't know what skills it has. But take the Accord Recon here, right? Accord Recon, Accord Recon. So, Accord Recon has access to uh, Sin Beacon, Stock Decoy, Cryo Grenade, Resonating Bolts, uh, as well as the Accord Artillery Strike, and maybe one or two more skills. Whatever. It has access to those skills. Uh, and it also has access to the R36 Assault Rifle. Okay, that's pretty decent. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons why I started playing Recon was because of the R36 Assault Rifle. Because it is my favorite primary weapon of the game at this point. Then again, I haven't really played all that much. But it is a very precise Assault Rifle. 
it even has a scope, it's it's pretty decent rifle. Now, the battle frame that I currently have is the Raptor. So the Raptor would be an advanced version of the Recon. There are two advanced versions of the Recon, one of them being the Raptor, the other one being the Nighthawk. Okay, so I unlocked the Raptor. Through the use of normal uh, pilot tokens, I leveled up a couple of these battle frames, got enough pilot tokens, unlocked the Raptor. So why would I say then that the Raptor is a much better um, is a much better battle frame than the Recon? Because the Raptor can do everything that the Recon can do, and I literally mean everything. Everything that the Recon can do, the Raptor can do as well. Okay, that's not so impressive. So it can do the same as the Recon. What else? Well, it can do more, because for instance, whereas the Recon can only equip the R36 Assault Rifle, the, um, the Raptor can also equip a Charge Rifle. Now, a Charge Rifle is a Sniper Rifle, and I don't actually really care for Sniper Rifles, if I'm to be completely honest, but I like the fact that I have the option. So this is very different from my other rifle, as you guys can see. It has uh, an effective range of 215 meters, has a pretty decent zoom, as you guys can see, and it packs a hell of a punch. If you land a headshot with this bad boy, trust me, the enemy is gonna feel it, because I've played with it for a little bit. It is a pretty impressive um, weapon. However, once again, I'm not really a sniper guy. So, I'm going to stick with the R36 Assault Rifle, because again, like I said, my class can do both things. Sorry about that message from my uh, cell phone here, I'm gonna put it on silence. Anyways. Uh, so it can do everything the Recon can, and more. Like, for instance, I, can, I also have access to the Sin Beacon from the Recon, but I also have access to stuff like the Sin Scrambler, I also have access to stuff like the Power Field, the Stock Teleport Beacon, as well as Overload. I have access to a, a whole bunch of more skills. So I have access to everything the Recon has, as well as everything the Raptor has. And that happens with all battle frames. Like, say for instance, Oh, I really like the assault battle frame. Okay, have you considered getting maybe the Firecat fire frame, which I, fire frame, the Firecat battle frame, which a lot of players seem to be playing right now, or maybe even the other one, which is the Tiger Claw, because they can do everything that the assault can do and more. That is the thing. It's not that they're better; they just have a wider variety of skills, which, in my opinion, is enough reason why you shouldn't really bother maxing out uh, an Accord, um, what are the Accord battle frames. That is my opinion once again, to each his own. The only reason to even use the Accord battle frames is the current PvP, I mean instance PvP like Battlegrounds, because when you go to those PvP arenas, you will get basically set up with a basic version of your gear. So if I would go into the arena as a Dreadnought, they would give me the Dreadnought set of skills. If I was to go with the advanced version of Dreadnought, like the Rhino or the Mammoth, which I actually don't own, they would give me their skills instead of a mix. So like for instance, right now on this Raptor, if I have the R36 rifle, which is automatic as opposed to the sniper rifle, if I was to go into PvP, they would give me the charge rifle, the sniper rifle I just showed you. So because PvP is very standardized, it's almost like a MOBA in a way. Um, no, actually, it's, it's more like Quake, let's say it like that even. It's almost like Quake. You get a basic version of your class, and you fight against other basic versions of other classes, so that it's perfectly balanced. That is the way PvP is right now. That will be world PvP in the future, and there the, uh, the mixed battle frames will actually matter more, but whatever. In standard PvP right now, that is the only point where you might want to use an Accord battle frame. Other than that, like I said, unless you want to gimp yourself, yourself in terms of skills, you want to go ahead and get one of the more advanced versions. You should go to the website on Firefall and check out what each of the advanced versions of the battle frame that you like the most does in order to select the battle frame for you. I would not advise people to max out Accord battle frames. So, sorry if I kind of um, went, uh, went a little on. Uh, on that specific uh, topic, but I cannot stress this enough because it was a mistake that I was making. I was just like, I'm a max out recon, gonna be this amazing recon, and then I'm like, yeah, if I do that, I'm gonna basically be um, gimping myself out of some pretty cool skills. Like, for instance, I'm the Raptor, right? 
I wanted to use the R36 rifle because I like it. So I used the R36 rifle from the recon. I also used two skills from the recon, actually three skills from the recon, which happened to be the Sin Scram uh, not not Sin Scrambler, the Sin Beacon, which increases the damage of everyone that's around that beacon. It also marks them so that I can see them from behind cover and stuff like that. Uh, I also have Resonating Bolts, which is a skill that I really like. These are bolts that you throw and then they explode and make a pretty decent AoE damage. And then I have the Power Field, which is actually a recon, uh, not a recon, um, which is actually a Raptor skill. What the Power Field does is, while I'm under the effects of Power Field, which is about 10 seconds, I believe, I get to shoot my weapon as much as I want, not spending any bullets, and also increases my fire rate. After a while, however, you will start consuming bullets again because the buff wears out. And the thing is, Power Field works for everyone in your vicinity, so everyone can go into the Power Field and get the buff for that, which in my opinion is pretty damn cool, and it gives my class a little bit of diversity. So I am not only this guy who can shoot the crap out of monsters, uh, can mark them with my skills and whatnot, I can also buff other people. And that is the main reason why I wanted to be a raptor to begin with. So that's all I had to say about battle frames. Now let's focus a little bit on gear, shall we? So something very important that I wanted to tell you guys about gear is that this game has something which, um, which basically is, I would just call, gear decay. And what that means is your gear decays. And by that I mean it becomes unrepairable after a while. Like for instance, if you press tab, it will show you a report of kind of parts that you have damaged in your battle frame. And as you can see, currently my battle frame has three parts damaged. All the way up to one of them is in 36% um, durability. The other ones are at 50%. So what does this mean? These three items are actually damaged beyond repair, so I cannot repair them anymore. They have been repaired so often that they just can't be repaired anymore. And what's going to happen is once that, once that durability reaches zero, those items are gone. Forever. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this yet, but I have to admit, it definitely gives you a penalty for dying. Because when you die, your only penalty at this point in time is you lose a little bit of durability on your items. I believe that in the future it's also going to cost Christite to repair your items, but that feature does not seem to be implemented yet. But you can definitely see the cost uh, over here if you go to the um, Battle Frame Garage, you go to Maintenance, you hit Repair, and you can see that there's a total over here. Interesting. I was not aware of this. Even when you just slightly use your items, they still lose a little bit of durability. Wow. <laughs> It is a penalizing system. Anyways, as you can see here, the R36 Assault Rifle, it says there, durability 999 out of 1000, and then repairability 4113 4, um, durability, which means by the time I repair this weapon to its fullest four times, it's not going to be repairable anymore. Same thing with these resonating bolts right here. By the time I go through them four times, it's not going to be repairable anymore. It definitely adds a lot of pressure when you are about to die, which is a good thing. I feel that it, games don't punish you enough for dying nowadays, and I definitely like this mechanic. Now, so far, I would have to say that the balance is set up in a way that uh, by the time I've had to basically, that I've had a weapon that was about to break, I was about to go ahead and craft the next level of that weapon, so it didn't really matter that much. Whether or not that will take effect in future, I do not know. There's also the fact that uh, the items that you pick up from monsters, they do not have um, a repairability pool. It's like they just have their base durability. Once that thing is gone, it's gone. You can't repair it, that item is gone. So, like I said, there's a definite system here in place that will punish you for dying quite a bit. It will also just punish you if you make mistakes, if you're like spending time doing stupid stuff with your weapons, most definitely, like if you're just sitting in town shooting your brand new machine gun, as you can see, it will take away its durability. It will punish you. So I kind of like that aspect of punishment. Uh, it's just a pain in the ass, like, because crafting is really, really hard. And speaking of crafting, let's take a look at that as well. Like I said, today's video is more of a guide video than anything else. Let's have a look at crafting, shall we? Now, currently, I believe that I am crafting two items here. Yep. 
I'm actually I'm researching one item and I'm crafting another one. I'm researching the second personal thumb, and you guys might be wondering, whoa, you're only doing that now? I mean, experienced players, if you happen to be watching this video, you're only doing that now? Yeah, I haven't been thumping a whole lot, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, anyways, so let's say you want to do some crafting, right? Let's say the most basic type of crafting that exists, which is the weapon. So, for starters, navigating the crafting menu can be quite a pain in the ass, so I would advise you just come up to the molecular planet printer and explore the crafting menu for a little bit to get yourself familiarized with it. Anyways, let's talk a little bit about crafting. Let's say I want to craft a new R36 rifle. Well, no. Let's say I want to craft a charge rifle, one of those sniper rifles, right? So here it is. Charge rifle receive. Receive. <laughs> receive. So there's two items that I need to construct in order to make a charge rifle. One of those is the charge rifle receiver. The other one is the charge chamber. So the charge rifle receiver will affect the damage that your weapon does, whereas the charging chamber will affect the clip size. What do you mean by this? What I mean is that charging in this game, uh, charging, crafting in this game is dynamic. It's not like you have this set of um, this set of crafting recipes and they're always going to output an item with the same stats. No, it doesn't work like that in Firefall. What you got to do is, let's go to the receiver for instance. This is going to affect the damage of your weapon. So let's say, okay, I want to, I want my weapon to make as much damage as possible. Okay, then what you want to do is you want to get your resource pool here and you want to select your highest quality component. So as you can see, the quality of copper, this blue copper that I have here is 722. So if I wanted my rifle to do as much damage as possible, I would want to go ahead and use this copper for the construction of this rifle. Same thing for this organic uh, material here. As you can see, once again, several quality, uh, several qualities for the material that I can put here, and I would want to use the best one to get as much damage as possible out of my rifle. Now, I'm not really going to craft this because, trust me, resources are scarce, but this is what you would have to do to get as much damage as possible you can out of your rifle. And I might be wondering, well, what is the reason for me not to just use the best quality materials all the time? Simple, because you're not going to be able to get the best quality materials all the time and you might want to save the best quality materials for your second tier of the charge rifle because as you can see here this says charge rifle one this will be to create a charge rifle of level one but i can now go on to research and research is where you research things that you can then craft so let's say i want to go to my raptor and oh i can actually research charge rifle two so you will research Charge Rifle 2, and then you might want to spend those high quality materials on Charge Rifle 2 instead. So again, there are several reasons for you, there are several different reasons for you to pick and choose the different resources that you want to use for your weapons. And trust me, you will want to pick and choose those things uh, accordingly. Now, how do you get these resources, right? That is the question. How do you get resources in this game? Well. What's this? Ugh, chose an energy bomb. That thing's gonna explode. Anyways, getting resources in the game is pretty simple. So, you can go to any of the purple things in here. Any of these purple things in the game will get you resources. Like, this is an Ares mission. As a matter of fact, that's probably what we're gonna end up doing. Let's try and do that Ares mission. Seems like it's a simple one. Not exactly sure I'm gonna be able to complete it, though, because Ares missions take time, and I do want to go ahead and uh, use as much of this video as possible to um, guide you guys through the mechanics of the game not really show you guys the action of the actions of um, you know shooting stuff and doing missions another thing that you guys will want to definitely master is the use of your jump jets because if you do not master the use of your jump jets you're not going to be able to get to high places like what I am doing now. Obviously, higher level jump jets will help, but trust me when I tell you, it is not just the I the level of the item in this game, it is much more what you do with it than necessarily the level of the item. Like, for instance, the simple fact that I got this, this far up here with jump jets too, another person that doesn't know how to use jump jets might not have gotten this far. It, it, trust me, you really have to master the jump jet system. Wow, looks like the mission that I wanted to do is gone. There's another mission here, as well as another mission here. Let's just go to this one. 
I'm not very confident because as you can see, there's like a white icon on top of this mission. It looks like three little white dudes. That basically means that this mission is designed for a group. Let me just uh, reduce the G's over there of that uh, coming down. But basically, this is a mission. Let's see if we... Holy crap, no. This is way too much high level for me. Hell no. Jesus Christ. This would be a pain in the ass mission. I mean, I can do it with tactics like this, most likely. But it is still an unknown whether or not I would be successful. Here we go, guys. Have some resonating bolts. How many of them did I kill? Looks like I killed quite a few. Adeus! Adeus means goodbye in Portuguese. Jesus Christ, even the Dreadnought's tearing me apart. Here you guys go. Here's a Sin Beacon for you. There. Have some more of this. And some more of this. This is gonna take forever. I don't even know what the objective of this mission is. I'm sorry, is it hurting? That's a damn shame. Come on, what you guys want, huh? Want some of this? Have some more of this grenade fire. Let's see if I can ninja complete this mission, but I highly doubt it. Especially because I honestly do not have the patience. This raider is using some kind of teleport tech. They'll pay well if we can get him to activate it. They want to trace him. Oh. So basically, I have to find the raider that is using teleport tech. Oh, this is going to take forever. Sorry, guys. I'm not going to show you this particular mission. Let's see if I can find something simpler. Oh, wow. All kinds of bad stuff happening, and everything requires a group, except for this Ares mission. Well, instead of that, let me just show you something. Either way, just be aware that if you complete one of those missions, you will get a random amount of resources. And depending on the difficulty, you will get, obviously, more or less resources. At this point in time, I would risk as far as saying that your contribution to the mission is not as important but they're they probably are going to want to change that as the game progresses now another thing that you can do to get resources is you can also go and take care of these chosen strike teams chosen incursions this will both give you resources and um resources and experience now in terms of um getting resources your priorities on the map should actually be when there is a chosen strike team about to invade a major city, which happens every now and then, like let's say there's a chosen team about to invade Sunken Harbor, you want to go and participate in that event. They're going to give you like 6,000 resources spread throughout three different types of resources. Another way of grabbing resources, it's, let's say you find this place, one of these things. For starters, once you do the tutorial at the start of the game, they're going to give you a hammer, which you can then pick in this drop-down menu. It's called a scan hammer. If you come over to one of these things and you use a scan hammer, boom, it's going to break it down and it's going to give you resources, which is pretty damn good. Also, when you use the scan hammer, you're going to get a scan report, which will tell you what kind of minerals are in this area. So as you can see, there would be a 28% chance to get raw iron, a 19% chance to get raw octine, and a 4% chance to get raw carbon. So this is how, another way that you get resources, and in this way, you can actually select the type of resource that you're going to be getting, because some items will require a specific type of resource as opposed to a family of resource. The stuff that you saw me do for the rifle, they were asking for a family of resources, like they wanted some generalistic iron, and I could pick whatever kind of iron I had from my, um, from my uh, resource pool. However, some specific recipes might require you to have carbon which will require you to actually come and get carbon or octine or whatever. Let's see, let's get the scan hammer and um, hit it someplace else. You can also use a flashlight when it's dark. Let's use it here. Okay, so here you're only gonna get raw iron, sifted earth. Sifted earth is pretty useless. Uh, I only use the, the crap, these crappy things to level up your, um, to level up your battle frame, and I will show you guys why. But anyways, I'm just going to thump the next result that I get, regardless of what we get. Okay, as you can see here, we're, we're going to get a 50% chance of getting raw iron. So in order to thump, you need to get yourself a personal thumper. Now, this is the stock one, so, the stock one, so they're going to give you this one for free. 
And I'm just going to lay it down here. Incoming now the first number. thing... Let's get to mining. The first thing you want to do is do not stand there. If you stand inside that line, you will die. Once this thing lands, it will straight up kill you. Anyways, once you call down a thumper, you can actually craft more advanced versions of thumpers, which will get you um, better items, but will also call down uh, harder monsters. As you can see, these monsters have been attracted by the thumper, and that is what's going to be happening while the thumper is gathering materials. So, one of the really good classes for thumping, in my opinion, would be the Engineer, because the Engineer can just lay down a whole bunch of turrets that do all kinds of crazy stuff, and those turrets will most likely take care of the great majority of monsters, as well as your grenade launcher and all that kind of jazz. However, I have seen someone um, thump with um, a Raptor, which was using the same rifle as I am, as well as a grenade launcher, which is my secondary weapon as well. But that is not the reason why I chose this class, because that guy had some pretty sweet gear, which I did not have. But anyways, I had seen someone play with this class, and it was... He was being really, really effective at some really high-level thumping, so... I'm not saying that other classes can't do well, I'm just saying that, according to my personal logic, I would feel that the, um... The Engineer would be the most indicated class for thumping. Now, another thing about thumping is that at any point in time, you can just send your thumper up. Obviously, the longer you keep your thumper here, uh, the more materials you are going to get once the thumper goes up. So that is something to keep in mind. It is a risk-reward risk kind of thing, because as you can see, it says right there that my thumper is at 25% um, capacity, but it is only at 90% integrity. So as monsters start hitting your thumper, eventually they will destroy your thumper unless you're able to defend it. See now, 88% integrity, 30% capacity. Now I'm gonna let this um, this thumper actually go all the way to 100%, because again, this is the stock thumper, and if you're not able to do a stock thumper all the way to 100%, you might as well uninstall the game at this point, because it should be fairly simple. I've never really seen anything particularly hard. Now other players might join you when you start th thumping. As you can see, I have an engineer here. He's um, joined in. Do not be afraid when other players join in. They will not. Um, interfere with your rewards as well uh, in uh, with your rewards at all I mean and they will also be rewarded for helping you out so there really is no need for people not to help each other when thumping and there is no need to be all possessive about no this is my thumping spot go away trust me no reason for that whatsoever unless you're just a complete antisocial <clears throat> anyways so this is thumping and now you can probably see why I haven't done all that much of it because despite the fact that it is probably one of the most efficient ways to get resources as well as select the resources that you're gonna get as well as get experience and stuff like that this is probably one of the most efficient ways to do it however I prefer doing stuff traveling out through the world um, doing Ares missions all that kind of stuff uh, it, it's just my personal preference so I end up getting random um, random materials as opposed to actually selecting the material the materials that um, that I get which is something that you can do when thumping however you have noticed that I am crafting advanced thumpers in my uh, crafting table there and the reason for that is because the, the point that I've got in game right now actually requires me to do so I'm probably not going to tell you about that particular thing in this video but I will tell it. I will tell you about it in the next video. Let's just finish up this thumper here, so that I can show you what the rewards, um, what the rewards thing looks like. There you go. There's also um, this is a, th a solo thumper, so this is only for it's designed for one person. But of course, people can join in. I don't really think it scales it. So like, if there's two people doing a one person. Thumper it doesn't really mean that the thumper is going to get harder, as far as I can tell. But then there's also squad-based thumpers. So these are thumpers that are designed to actually be used with more than one person. Obviously, the rewards that those are going to yield are going to be a lot better than this one. But the monsters that are going to show up are also going to be a lot harder than this one. Now, I don't know what the exact penalty is for losing your thumper all the way to zero. With the stock thumper, I'm going to believe that nothing happens. But uh, through what I've read in the forums, I believe that if you lose, like, let's say, a level 1 thumper or something like that, 
it's actually lost. You're gonna have to go ahead and craft another one. So this, once again, is kind of a reality check for people to uh, keep in mind that it's not just all fun and games. If you mess things up, this game will punish you, which makes it a challenging game in my opinion, which is something that I like, as you guys are obviously aware at this point. I like challenging games, and so far this is an MMO with what seems to be some of the most challenging mechanics and, that I've seen in recent MMOs. I also like the fact that it is a shooter, and I especially like the fact that it's got jetpacks, and that it's even there is even a somewhat challenging aspect to it to even just navigate the map. Anyways, Thumper is done, 100% capacity. At that point, you're going to click E on it, and it's going to go away. It's a wrap, 100% profit. And as you could see, something popped up and said, uh, you've been rewarded. You can press the N key to see exactly what you got. As you see, it shows there Thumper results. You can click your left mouse button. Tells you what percentage uh, you completed of your Thumper. I completed 100%. Percentage of health left was 77%. The enemies destroyed 31 And the rewards you got were raw iron and sifted earth. Which, uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty damn crappy, if I'm to be completely honest. Uh, but let's go over here and get rid of this thing. I mean, since we're in the vicinity... Oops, no, that's not what we want. We want the scan hammer. Okay. Boom. Thank you. Okay, so that is one way to get resources. The other way, like I said, is to do purple things. Like, I could go and help this guy do his own thumping, and I will get resources from doing it. I'm not sure if this is um, a one-person thumper or if it's a squad thumper or whatever. That monster glitched the crap out. Once again, beta is beta. Also, I can just come here, take a couple of pot shots of monsters, and I will get experience rewards and whatnot, like you guys will see. If this now nah, this video is probably not going to last long enough for them to finish that thump. But either way, how is this? No way. Die. Okay, now then, let's go into the crafting station. Once you get those resources, you have to refine them. Manufacturing finish. I've actually just finished um, building another personal thumper, which is pretty good. Thank you. Recommended one to two players in stage one to two gear, 400 capacity. Wow, okay. I've never used one of those, I gotta try it. <clears throat> Either way, uh, once you get those resources, you have to go over to the refine menu here. And you have to go to raw resource refinement. I have it at level 3. You can research raw resource refinement. You, you maybe start only with level 1, which will only allow you to process one resource at a time. Excuse me. Uh, raw resource refining level 3 will allow you to process more resources. So as you can see, I have an abundance of resources here. The stuff that we've gotten is this. Some raw iron. So basically what you do at this point, I'm just going to add in a whole bunch of my own stuff that I need to um, do right here. So let's do these 200. I like doing the ones that have um, that I have the most quantity of first because those are going to take longer. So let's do this 297. And what's next? I'm going to go ahead with the 180. No, 211. There. And now you can manufacture. And that will start processing those uh, materials. Only after these materials have been processed, you can then use them on recipes. And also, only after you've processed them, will you be able to use them to upgrade your battle frame. Because if you look here, some of these things will require you to have 1000 uh, CI is uh, Christite, so that is the game currency. But it is also going to require 1250 organic materials. Now, when I upgrade my battle frame, what I usually tend to do is I just pick the lower quality materials because like if I click, actually I can't because I don't have enough experience, but if I was to click here, they're going to tell me, well, select from your list of, um, of materials, what material you want to use. Usually to upgrade the battle frame, I don't think there's anything wrong with just using the crappiest materials because um, nothing seems to change in the kind of skills that you get as far as I can see. But yeah. That is the basics. Also, as you can see, there's something says here, allocate surplus. While I'm in this menu, might as well tell you about it. What, what is this? This means that I have a lot more power than I actually need for my gear. And it allows you to allocate said power to different pieces of your equipment. In this case, I have 
I have pretty much everything set up to everything uh, except for the stock power field because I can't actually uh, put anything in stock power field because it is the stock item and you cannot divert power to stock items. Whew. Anyways, I know that this has been a long tutorial. There is still a lot more that I want to talk to you guys about. However, um, this has been the very first guide, so to speak, of showing you guys the very basics of Firefall. Once again, this is just the very basics of Firefall. I mean, we haven't even gotten into any of the complicated stuff. So let me know what you guys think about Firefall. I have been really excited about Firefall. As a matter of fact, I've even started that Steam group uh, core, which hopefully more people will join in there so that I can then invite you guys on to join my army. Uh, if you guys see me in-game, message me. The name is Rurikind, as you can see on the top left corner. Uh, and yeah, that is going to be it for this video. As per usual, leave me your comments, feedback, all that kinds of good stuff in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, wait, I haven't shown you guys something. <laughs> I told you guys I was going to show you the LGV. Uh, let me see, where is the LGV? I think it's over here, no? Where is it? Oh, vehicles. LGV for a race, yes, let's select that. So as you can see here, you press the race terminal, and then you can put down the LGV. And this is what it looks like to ride a motorcycle in this game. Now, the advantage of having one of the other ones is that you can summon it anywhere you want. Whereas if you have the one I have, you can only summon Boss, it at race terminals, which is a pain in the ass, to say the least. But it is definitely a very convenient thing to have a vehicle like this to run through the battlefield Boss, to get to where you want fast. Nearby. I'm not exactly sure if you can actually run people over or not, but um, yeah, it is definitely pretty the sweet. I would love to have one, but uh, yeah. I can only I can only use it for race events so as you guys can see there's actually a timer on my screen that is the time that I have to get to wherever this race event is supposed to be but uh, I'm not I'm not even going there I'm just like fooling around and once the timer reaches its limit the bike is going to explode so I can still use this to travel like say in between cities and stuff like that but I can't do it for I can't use it for much else anyways now this has been Rurikon and uh, the other important, oh yeah, jeez, I keep reminding stuff. There's just so, so many things about this, this, this game, which is when you get started in the game, eventually you will receive objectives for, Boss, for daily quests, and make those your maximum priority. Because uh, let me just show you something here. I've already completed my daily quest today, so I can't show you. But here is the daily quest rewards. So if you complete whatever tasks they ask of you, you get this box that you can summon down. It's going to be chuck full of goodies. Those goodies are going to be gold, materials, like for instance, this is Christite is money, this is a me methine a material, this is more money, this is toxins, another material, and I got an Accord Elite Sticky Grenade Launcher, which looks like it's pretty sweet. It is a secondary weapon, and looks like it's pretty high quality. So yeah, once again, do your daily. And these are not like dailies that will take you like your entire play session to complete now and usually you can even just do them while you're doing other stuff so it's not like these dailies are hard to do at least the ones i've gotten so far aren't anyways this time for real thank you very much for watching leave me comments feedback all the kinds of good stuff in the comments section below thank you very much for watching and i will see you guys ah, in the next one